Moi. Being uh, months that I'm waiting uh, to publish this video, I will not lose uh, any time presenting it or introducing uh, its uh, topics. In the first part of this uh, episode called uh, Buried Cities Enigma, I have uh, picked up the last card and I have let uh, life guiding me to start uh, from the end. But uh, now I will choose uh, the card. Let's talk uh, about glaciers. For what I understood, they are telling us that the areas of the North Atlantic Ocean, Iceland, Greenland, north of Scandinavia and Finland, were covered in ice until the last cold period of the Ice Age, that, uh, as we can read on the screen, ended some 10,000 years ago, and our warm period of the Ice Age started. Talking about uh, Iceland, for example, the ice started to melt some 15,000 years ago, and some part of Iceland was without ice some 13,000 years ago. Some 9,000 years ago, the big glacier was fully melted, and Iceland was without glacier until some 2,500 years ago, when glaciers started to form on highest mountains. So it is uh, clearly written that the glacier in this uh, particular area of the Arctic Circle started forming again 2,500 years ago, and they slowly reach the monstrous sizes that we can appreciate, uh, for example, in this uh, cartographical work from uh, 1859, made by the cartographer Tonsberg. In very recent time, due to the so-called global warming, the glaciers started to melt in an alarming rate. Really? Being a cold, snowy November day in beautiful Finland, the situation became almost hilarious. So, being already on the path, and due to the appropriate name for the topic concerning this investigation, Let's start uh, with the country of uh, Iceland. On the screen at this moment, we can appreciate a map of our day's Icelandic lands, with uh, its impressive uh, glaciers. By the way, they are 13, if we count uh, only the largest one. And the next few pictures that I personally took are showing how they look in a warm morning on a month of May this year. Their beauty is uh, absolutely hypnotic and unforgettable. The images on the screen are of the largest one, named Vatna Jokul. The Icelandic word for glacier is Jokul. So let's start to put some order in this uh, information about uh, what I personally think is the most incredible place I've ever been. So they are telling us that uh, those natural wonders were reforming themselves for the last 2,500 years. But uh, do you remember the map made by the Swedish ecclesiastic Olaus Magnus in 1539 that I have presented to you in the first part uh, of this video? Well, here we have it again on the screen, and uh, as we can observe, there are no signs of glacier nowhere to be seen. But this uh, cartographical work is not three or four thousand years old. So where are the glaciers? Wikipedia have the answer. He was uh, misconcepted, or let's say confused. Fine, mystery solved. Really? So let's go clear our minds on this topic straight to the place where all of the experts in history take their knowledge from. The geographical work that I will present you in the next few minutes comes straight from the National and University Library of Iceland. The first map that I choose to present you is a magnificent work made by the cartographer Sebastian Munster in the second half of the 1500. And as we can observe, in the areas where the biggest glacier lie in our days, there is depicted a lake and two rivers that flow toward uh, the ocean. There is no sign of ice, nowhere to be seen. But of course, 
At that time, the cartographers were primitive and confused, so we will find uh, mistakes here and there in depicting lands. Fine, let's try with another geographer. The next map that I will present you is a 1548 work made by Hieronymus Gourmand, and again, we can appreciate the same situation. Not only in the southeast part of the island there are no signs of glaciers, but instead lakes and rivers, but there is no sign of ice nowhere on the entire land. Instead, where in our days lies all of that uh, ice mass, we can clearly see depicted forests, town, tents, people in short pants or almost uh, naked, and the only ice present on the map is uh, in the ocean on the east side of the island, but uh, examining it uh, closer, the lines that compose it are nowhere else on the map, and also the strange way that it is painted, kind of in two dimension, is different than the rest of the map. But uh, we will examine that ice later in other maps. For the moment, uh, let's investigate those uh, towns that uh, I can assure you in our days are not there. On the screen, we can see a page of a book written by Benedetto Bordone in 1547 about uh, Iceland. And in the last two lines, it is clearly written that Iceland è la più remota che ha notitia puenuta ci sia, la quale è bene abitata e ha molte città, è isola motuosa con molti fiumi. I will translate for you these uh, quotes. Iceland is the most remote that we have knowledge of. It is largely inhabited and has a lot of cities. A lot of cities? It's an island with a lot of mountains and uh, rivers. In the second part of the page, he quotes that the island has the longest day of three months and a night of similar length, even giving us the dates of begin and end of it, clearly referring to the summer and winter length of the day. So there is no doubt that he is talking about Iceland. He even put a map at the bottom of the page. But uh, this particular work cannot help us uh, much to understand if there is ice due to the fact that uh, it is a pretty basic and uh, simple work, but uh, clearly show us those uh, cities. If we move just two decades further in time though, we have this cartographical work, made by Ferrando Bertelli in 1566. Let's start uh, looking at the illustration on the top left part of the map. The date is I 566. That's an I, not a one. There's even a dot on top of the letter I, representing the time after Jesus Christ, as I have shown you in the previous episode called the staged century. But uh, what is concerning the topic of this research is the map itself. And as you can see, on this uh, really spectacular work, there are no signs of glacier nowhere to be seen, except for those kind of pieces of ice depicted in the ocean that, uh, first of all, are not in the east side of the island where the Mare Congelatum lies, and uh, second of all, they look completely out of place on the map. The color is different, the way of painting is different. Actually, to me, they look added to the map by someone else. But uh, we will examine this phenomenon later on. For the moment, uh, let's look for glaciers. To start, there are painted forests everywhere. And in those areas, I can assure you that there are no trees at all. Second of all, there are depicted lakes and rivers. There is no doubt that those are large bodies of water and not glacier there are boats depicted in it. Moving to the middle of this amazing map, 
we can appreciate a volcano under eruption. Some villages, a large city, some tents and plenty of uh, forest. But uh, if we move our research just a bit lower, we can learn that uh, it's the country of Iceland. It is clearly written Islanda. There's no doubt about it. But uh, my question is, what are those buildings beside the largest city on the island? They are very peculiar. Do you remember in the first part of this video when I've shown you the same strange structures but in the southwest of Finland depicted on the map of Olaus Magnus? They really look the same. What are they? And also in this other map found in Italy from the same period in history, it gives us the same exact details. There are no glacier on the island. I will never accept the idea that those brilliant cartographers were, as Wikipedia tell us, misconcepted. It's an insult to the knowledge of our ancestors. I'm starting to be really annoyed of the so-called historians telling us what is real or misconception. When something doesn't fit in their manipulated point of view, it's not there, or it's phantom, or simply we are too ignorant to understand it. I have a message to all of the copy paster, uh, sorry, historians. Start uh, reading the comments posted uh, under my video and you will learn that uh, they are written by brilliant minds and pure-hearted people. I'm sorry, I really hope not to offend uh, anyone, but uh, what I'm presenting you is staggering. Look at the next cartographical work made uh, by Girolamo Porro in 1572. Where are the glaciers? And again, look at the ice depicted in the ocean. To me, it is clearly added to the map. It is completely different than the rest of the work. The color is different. The way of painting is different. To me, it looked like that they want us to think that there's ice in the sea. But I can be mistaken. The next uh, work is a 1601 map of uh, Iceland made by the geographer Johannes Vriens. I cannot continue repeating the same questions. What are all of those cities? There's ice in those areas in our days. Where are the glaciers? Next one, from 1616, made by Petrus Bertius and Jodocus Ondius. Look at the quantity of cities and towns depicted all over the island, and in particular, where the glacier lies in our days. All of these uh, maps come from the National and University Library of Iceland, not from some comic book. The next uh, illustration comes from a book written by Alain Manesson Mallet in 1683, and as you can appreciate, there are no sign of ice nowhere to be seen. It is actually painted very green. In the next uh, few minutes, I will let you enjoy some cartographical work made by very respected geographer and cartographer representing this very strange and out of place uh, ice in the ocean. By the way, in many cases, repeating uh, the same drawing over and over. And of course, no glaciers. It's uh, up to you to come out uh, with an opinion about uh, what I call false ice. Please let me know in the comments what you think about it. It is really made by the same person that created uh, the map. Thank you. 
I can continue forever showing you maps of Iceland depicted completely out of ice. But uh, I think that at this point it's pretty obvious that uh, something very fishy is uh, going on with the official version of history presented to us. So I will show you some other question that I have about this amazing island located in the North Atlantic Ocean. In these uh, two images you can appreciate some very strange mountains. And uh, I don't think that I have to say what they look to me because uh, they are really out of place. But uh, I will let you take uh, your own opinion. Second of all, can you see these strange thin islands or whatever they are? They keep going on for kilometer and kilometer. And if you follow them, they have this uh, strange opening between them. What a nice uh, natural protection for boats. Are they natural? Because uh, I have lived for over a decade in volcanic uh, islands in the Atlantic Ocean, and this is the only place where I've seen them. And they are located exactly where there are cities depicted in the old maps. But they can be natural, and it can be just a coincidence. By the way, on the screen, you can see some pictures that show how they look like. And I've been uh, walking uh, on them. They are made of uh, very small stones. And uh, what is also very interesting is that uh, in one of them, there are some ruins called uh, Papos. If uh, somebody knows what uh, is there, can you please uh, write it uh, uh, on the comment or send me some pictures? Because uh, when I was there, I couldn't find any way to get there. Papos uh, is located in uh, one of these uh, islands in the southeast between the city of uh, Ofn and uh, Jupivogur, right after a tunnel. Third uh, question. Can you see the mountain on the left side of the images? If we close up to it, some strange lines are visible. They look like uh, old uh, fields and they go on and on in the south of the island. How old are they? Because they look very similar, if not identical, to these fields found in enormous quantity in Canary Island, in particular on the island of La Gomera, one of my homes. But uh, the one in Iceland, in some areas, they are appearing from under the ice melting raising many questions about their age. Again, I will ask the viewers to help me date them and discover who made them. Fourth and last question about uh, Iceland. What are these stones? Where do they come from? Who made those holes and sign on them? You can find a lot of those strange tool marks all over. These, in particular, are located on the side of the road that goes from Reykjavik to Borgarnes. And this one is located in the old area of the capital. Well, I think that uh, it's time to say goodbye to Iceland and move our research for answer to the neighboring areas of the uh, North Atlantic Ocean in search of the date of the appearance of the glaciers. Let's start, uh, obviously, with the land that have the second largest ice mass on the planet, after the forbidden land of Antarctica. I call it uh, forbidden due to the fact that uh, we cannot go there, we cannot photograph it, and most important, we cannot look at it with the so-called satellite images that uh, the honest uh, governments of the world are offering to us. I think that uh, not even the 10% is clear to investigate and study. Here you have some example of the quality of the images that are available to us of Antarctica. No comments are needed. I think that uh, we can learn more about uh, Antarctica from the misconcepted cartographer of the 16th and 17th century than from our day's expert uh, geographer, as you can see on the screen. Especially in this particular map made by Boache, 
lies many questions. How could they know how the lands look like under the ice? How could they know about Antarctica in any case? Fine, so Greenland, what a name is this one for a land covering ice? I didn't even start yet and I don't understand anything already. At school, I remember very well that the reason for this strange name was given to me due to the fact that when it was discovered in 982 by Enrico Ruffo, according to the works of Vincenzo Coronelli, an Italian cartographer that lived in the second half of the 17th century, it was summer and the south point of Greenland was out of ice. This is the original explanation that I grew up with. But uh, I have heard many other reasons, like, like that uh, they have called Greenland to favorite the migration to that land, and so on. But uh, let's start investigating this amazing natural formation called uh, glaciers. On the screen uh, at this moment, you can observe a Google map image of this enormous ice mass that uh, covers a very large part of the less populated country in the world, according to Wikipedia, Greenland. And here we can appreciate a map of Greenland and the North Atlantic Ocean in a cartographical work made by the cartographer Philip Gall in 1577. Examining it uh, with a bit of logic, few questions comes along. What is that enormous land in the areas of our day's North Pole? We will examine it uh, later on in this video. Second of all, what is that island called Friesland under the country of Iceland? But uh, looking at Greenland, the question is, how could they know and map those rivers so inland under the ice? Where is the ice in any case? There are three structures depicted, but uh, not in the south of the island, but in areas that in our days are covered with ice. Wikipedia will tell us that uh, Philippe Gall was uh, misconcepted or confused. Fine, so let's move to the next cartographer. His name was uh, Cornelis van Wittfliet and the map that I will present you was published in 1611. Keeping in mind that most probably he was confused, let's investigate his work. Again we can see Friesland, depicted with accuracy, surrounded by plenty of smaller islands, and with uh, at least 10 towns, settlement or villages. But uh, we will talk later in this video about uh, this uh, phantom uh, Friesland, for the moment, uh, let's check out uh, Greenland. Question. How could they map those mountain chains and rivers? I mean, in our days they are under hundreds if not thousands of meters of ice. Like in the case of Iceland, I can continue forever giving you proof that a few hundred years ago, all of the respected cartographers were painting the areas of the North Atlantic Ocean out of ice. The next uh, geographical work is from uh, Petrus Bertius and Jodocus Ondius in the first half of the 1600. Where are the glaciers? In this particular map, the mountains have even different shape, clearly proving that those areas were explored and not imagined. Please just look at the rivers. What is going on here? Vincenzo Coronelli is a very respected cartographer of the second half of the 1600, and uh, no glacier. He even depicted forests all over. And uh, surprise, Friesland is there like in all of the maps for centuries. He also wrote that Greenland was discovered, as I already mentioned, in 982 by Enrico Ruffo. So there is no doubt that it's Greenland. And in the illustration at the bottom of the map, there is a description of uh, Friesland, quoting, it was discovered by Niccolò Zeno and Patrizio Veneto, and it was fabulous. 
Just look at this map. Mountains, rivers and islands are out of ice. If we enlarge this particular work, we can appreciate again an enormous, well-known and mapped land in the areas of our day, North Pole. But before becoming even more controversial talking about it and Friesland, I will add a question. I have uh, always been a poor person. I have uh, left behind the monetary system already decades ago. And uh, I have never bought uh, anything for myself. Everything that I have is a gift uh, from life. Well, the only moment in life that I had a bit of money, I decided to invest it doing uh, something for Africa. But uh, let's make it short. I met a Dutch couple in Burkina Faso and I've decided to follow them to Ghana and participate in their pure-hearted project. The woman died of malaria. I personally got malaria in Burkina Faso and it's a miracle that I'm alive. I have seen with my own eyes hundreds of people waiting to die due to that uh, staged sickness. And even more incredible, when I was uh, hitchhiking in the desertic lands of the south of Morocco, I personally spoke with monsters that uh, were bringing viruses to the sub-Saharan Africa. I'm not making it up. The person that was uh, with me and left uh, rivers of tears after that encounter is uh, most probably watching this video. Please study malaria, AIDS and other sicknesses and you will get to the same conclusion. They are staged. But I will dedicate an entire video about this topic right after the end of the series of documentaries called Suomelle. Why am I talking about this? My question is, how is it possible that Greenland, Lapland and the north of Canada are the areas of the world with the most mosquito? I mean, what are they doing up there in the ice? Maybe because there was no ice up there in very recent time, or they come from openings into the inner earth, lighting the theory of an hollow earth as the brilliant mind of uh, our friend uh, Peace on Earth has uh, suggested.